I think about what you just said a lot, actually, that um, what if there's a fractal reflection of the relationship between mind and body, between state and market? So I would love to hear what you have to say about that. This. That was, it took me a, a little while to understand it, but that was a conclusion that I reached when I did the Bufo Avarius, which um, mm. if anyone who's listening, Bufo Avarius is uh, a toad from Mexico and it excretes a, a specific type of venom that um, in Mexican culture, um, they extract, dry out, and then smoke. And it contains within it a, a chemical compound called 5-MeO-DMT, which is dimethyltreptamine, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. arguably one of the most potent psychedelic. Oh, psychedelic's the wrong word because psychedelic comes with it, the idea of almost just like a frivolous experience, like, you know, mm. ecstasy where you go to a nightclub and get trashed. It's, let's say, a transcendental experience much more um, physiological that, than mental, right? Much more physiological. In fact, it would be tra transcendence through uh, submersion, mm. I guess, because you actually go into your body. You don't go upwards, you go downwards, I would argue. Mm. Mm. And when I did it, um, when I effectively, when my consciousness dissolved, for want of a better word, into my body, and I, I had a real for the first time in a long time, like a deep awareness of my body um, fizzing and, and feeling almost like feeling like my cells. Mm. And when I say that to, to put, that sounds so like wishy-washy. Another way of saying it would be a bit like you've got a camera on a football stadium and you're watching a game and you haven't had the volume on. And then when you turn the volume on, you suddenly realize what the crowd sounds like when it, when it chants. Mm. And suddenly I was like, hearing all of these hundreds of thousands or millions of cells chanting at me and becoming aware of a signal emerging from their collective wow. let's say, expression. Yeah. And, and with that, the emergent property of all of the, all of that say chanting was, was a lot of emotions, a lot of memories, a lot of, let's say embodied content that yeah. probably which, been tra which, trapped. Which is where they're stored, right? The emotions and memories are stored in the body. Yeah in the body yeah and when i came out of it at the, at the time it was happening i was very conscious of the fact of like why have i never heard from this yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> this like this collection of millions of parts that i'm carrying around every day yeah. why, why is why am, why am i never hearing these parts of me and it was like a really emotional like deeply emotional experience in terms of being a paradoxically a non non-duality based experience where i was both simultaneously deeply grieving and sad but also crying with joy at how beautiful it was to be deeply grieving and sad wow. and, and and recognizing that it's that that concept of knowing knowing that everything has to happen the way it happens including the bits that are tragic yeah in order for you to have a value of them you know because my mom yes. my mum had died um the month before so I'd, right. i i went to mexico after my mum's death and I, you know, you get all these amazing catharsis that comes through this experience and it only lasts like 15 minutes. So it's, it's mm -hmm. a highly, uh, you know, you blast off effectively. I highly recommend it to anyone who wants to consider it. Afterwards, when I was reflecting upon that relationship that I had in that 15 minutes, it occurred to me that if my body and my relationship to my body was scaled to a society, it stands to reason that if those cells were to have personal feelings about how I relate to them as individual members of the collective that is me, mm -hmm. they would feel oppressed, disenfranchised, and unrecognized and invisible. Right. Because it, yeah, Much it, like an individual would feel like in a communist state. Right. And then it occurred to me that a communist state makes an active attempt to suppress and repress the beliefs and feelings of its yes. individual constituents. And that's exactly what I'm doing with my body when I emotionally repress the impulses that are coming from my cellular constituents. Right. And um, going back to what you're saying, 
if we are in a fractal system, the idea that to simply intellectually accuse the state of being corrupt while simultaneously not treating your body right. and its cellular constituents with the conditions that they need to be happy yes. is a complete hypocrisy. And, yeah. and yes. since then I'm, I'm making the conscious effort not to drink as much and alcohol free, yeah. trying to exercise more. I'm trying to provide my body with, and I think that's where the, the concept in the biblical sense of, you know, like the, not, not even the biblical sense, just in terms of well-being, the idea of loving yourself. Yes. It sounds like a sort of flimsy, um, empty piece of like what, like, you know, life coach advice, but you could equally rephrase it to have respect to the democratic nation that you yes. are centrally planning with your mind because right. there are millions yes. of them that you are not looking after in your actions yes so love yourself is simply simply means be a responsible leader to the cells that make up you beautifully said um i'm reminded here of graham hancock yeah he, he writes about you know in I think he derived this from ayahuasca ceremonies with, um, we'll, we'll just say spiritual, spiritually attuned individuals that his question of how do we rectify the problems in Western civilization? And he said, we, ha we have to heal. We have severed ourselves from spirit and we have to rectify that. So I'm, I'm, I'm questioning here, if this is a post enlightenment residual attachment to intellectualism perhaps mm -hmm. that we all it's so deeply installed and i think you see this largely in um this may be narrow sample size of me but i feel like the people i've interacted with i've noticed that caucasian people tend to suffer from this more this overthinkingness or this over identification with the mind mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's racial necessarily it's just my own experience to the point that it torments them, right? They're completely disconnected from their body. They're not aware of their breath. They're out of, mm -hmm. they're, they have no control. Basically you're out of control yeah. because you're not, there's not a harmony between mind and body. And I yeah. wonder if, if it is a fractal reflection. So if, what if we have in our own psycho technological software that we've inherited from the enlightenment, you know, certain forms of platonic philosophy and certain forms of rationalistic reduction of, reductionalism, this way of thinking, if this has somehow left a residual severance from spirit that we're all dealing with, it's almost like a pathology, and then it manifests itself mm. at the macro level in totalitarian yeah. regimes, right? It's people yeah, yeah, that yeah. actually get to that level that think I can, between my ears, I can control this whole body of well, humanity. Yeah. And, it, and it's self-destructive. And I mean, there are, there are two, two things that, that, that um, two things that that triggers in my mind. The first is the, the, the theory or the thesis that's put forward by um, Ian McGilchrist in The Master and His Emissary, mm -hmm. which is how the Western world, which, which would be demographically comprised of, uh, let's say the Caucasian um, regions mm -hmm. have been largely, uh, their, their, their cultural framework is, is largely over the last few generations derived from the industrial revolution and the agricultural revolution. Uh, which is a very left hemispheric dominant uh, culture mm -hmm. of um, factory work and yeah. um, the the cat categorization of things and the element of of being a, a unit in a workforce, et cetera, yes. et cetera, et cetera. And the actual act of the left hemispheric dominant is that it it, it moves towards left hemisphere is is interested in control. Yes, right hemisphere freedom. is interested in relations. Yeah, yeah, and the left hemispheric dominance. Un unwittingly and you know even the people that are in the, the let's say the the hot seat of totalitarian control the highest highest up the rankings they are in some sense just as as detached from and hopelessly lost from the connection to the spirit as we are it's mm -hmm. just that we're we're downstream from them in yes. their decisions as as people that have control of the levers and we're just and we're constituting strings them. yep we are constituting them and yeah. and it, it and to go back to the to the reference of the idea of um, the suppression of the wants and needs and desires and values of the constituent members of a society. So when a totalitarian state 
wants to ignore or actively silence the dissent, dissenting voices of um, the individuals in a society. Mm -hmm. uh, to draw a parallel to that, when I, when Klaus Schwab and his friends draw up a plan to silence the dissent of, of what they see as problematic members of a society by, I don't know, whatever means they see fit, whether that be um, putting people in, in detention centers or whatever. Yeah. Um, I can sit there and I can be a, you know, a rightfully critical, um, you know, I intellectualize that and be like, this guy's evil. But then when I, when I overlay that mapping onto what we talked about, which is that I'm also the totalitarian leader of, of a kingdom that I have, right. I have command of, which is my body. Well, that's the same shit that I do when I hear dissenting voices within me and I decide to get drunk to silence them. Right. I'm, right. Chemi I'm, yeah. chemi I'm chemically inducing the containment and, and suppressing uh, very relevant and very real members of my constituency. Mm. And arguably, the vices that we, we are pumping into ourselves and the, and the methods and, and the distractions that we have mm. as a modern society is each of us running um, downstream from the, the, the say, the, the central planners of the society. We're the central planners of our bodies. And right. we are just as guilty as they are Yes, and, and I think that goes to the idea of the first thing to do when you want to fix the world is fix yourself. Clean your fucking room, because, right? <laughs> clean your fucking room. Because yeah. once you take control of your, once you um, create harmony in your own constituency, in your own kingdom, yeah, then that will flow upstream. Yes. And then, yes. And then that speaks to the idea of, you know, go into the abstractions here, but we've talked about the idea of time and electrons move down. They move up and downstream in time. Yeah. We have no idea what the flow of exchange is between the individual and the state and the state and the individual. Right. We tend to itemize it as being the state. Everything is downstream of the state. Right. But that's not, it's not strictly speaking true. There are billions of individuals that make up the state. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, like there's no reason to believe Well, there's every reason to believe that the individual responsibility of, of the individuals looking after their own um, sovereign king, kingdom, right. uh, collectively would therefore influence the constituency the, the the way that the society is organized so yes it comes back to once again personal responsibility that yes. they're, they're reflecting each other the world of klaus schwab and the world economic forum exists because we've all let's say denied personal responsibility for our role in it absolutely this is beautifully well said and I, I you know alcohol is described as spirits we know this, but maybe that's actually a connection as it's dampening spirits, right? We, and you, you know this, if you've ever alcohol, it can be medicinal in a way where if you have an emotional pain, you can drink and it sort of washes away, but it can also, you know, taken to an extreme, it's very destructive, right? You can, if you especially engage with it habitually, it can really disconnect you from your spirit or disconnect you from your body and send you down really dark paths. Um, I wonder here, you know, to your point where we typically think of things as flowing one way or the other, I wonder if that itself is a residual of our subject object metaphysics. So we think time is linear, A causes B, A causes B, A causes B. When we fail to see the other, the flip side that, you know, person's laying out for us here, that B values precondition A, and this is not just really based on his metaphysics alone, because we know in complex systems, so it would sound crazy that there's reciprocal feedback because you could never pin down a cause then, right? How can you ever say A causes B when somehow A causes B, but then B is influencing A? That seems like it doesn't fit in the materialist subject object worldview, but that is exactly how complex systems behave. We know in complex systems theory, it's all feedback loops everywhere you look. Everything is mutually reciprocally interacting. You can't, even the observer, the most fundamental level, you cannot observe a process at the quantum scale without impacting it. How you choose to observe a system influences how it manifests itself to you. So there's reciprocity in all conscious agency and awareness and the observed. And it's inescapable. It's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. So I think that is a, just a great point. And in, this gets to Jordan Peterson's thing, right? Before you go out and criticize the world, clean your fucking room, right? Like, 
reflect what you want, be the change you want to see in the world before you go out and criticize the, the, um, the, the, I guess the structure of existence as it is. And there's no other way to fix it. It doesn't seem like, um, and I wonder if, and this may speak to to Bitcoin's impact on people's lives where it's inspiring these personal transformations in a way there's a reciprocal feedback again where you have this monetary system this living metaphor that's uncompromising right it's like it's it's by definition got its shit together right it's really doing what it's supposed to do in the best way possible and it's reflecting back into people it's like hey get your shit together you know get your family yeah. together stop drinking eat eat correctly well, you know you know what it does is that it it invalidates the previously taken for granted mythology mm. that 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 came with this let's say the fiat money spigot and the central banking mm -hmm. system and, and and let's just say the the culture that manifested around those organizational mm -hmm. traits of centralized finance that other people are in control mm -hmm. and with that comes the um, let's say unquestioned assumption that you don't have full control of your own life and therefore mm -hmm. you're not responsible because you're just a victim to the decisions of people upstream. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that, that is a byproduct of looking at the world as being a pyramid Ponzi scheme, which right. is implicitly what it is in a central yeah. banking system. And what Bitcoin effectively does is makes people take a pill that says, no, 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 under this paradigm no one's in control that's you right. are in control of your own node yeah. participating in a fair game with everyone else that's got a node um therefore don't look to offload responsibility for your decisions onto a narrative of being the victim of a broken system because the system's not broken anymore if you're not participating fairly you're broken right but it, i think what bitcoin reveals is that there's no longer a na narrative excuse to not participate wholly with your own personal responsibility. It changes the mythology of the game in which you're participating yes. to you being um, just as, as uh, capable and on a, on, a, on a fair footing as everyone right. else. By mapping, we're, in the beginning we're in the beginning stages of that, but it, yes. it's, it's a complete shift in the paradigm of how we relate to society. Yes. And again, it's a higher resolution mapping of the truth that each of us is self-owned, right? It's actually mapping, I guess, our group identity, maybe, or this socioeconomic system. We have to put some protocol in place so we can all cooperate. This particular implementation maps much more closely to the truth that we are individually self-owned than all systems before it. You know, gold was close, but had all these limitations. That was a decentralized mapping to it, but it had limitations that caused it to become centralized. And this is the, in that Lessons of History book, they talk about this, the heartbeat of history, the systole and diastole is centralization and decentralization. And it, I just wonder where Bitcoin is interesting, man. It kind of unifies the opposites in a lot of ways because it, by being so decentralized, it is now going to become the central metaphor in the socioeconomic systems of the future it's, it's going to be the 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 mythological canvas yeah on which all economic activity operates and so, it's kind of a merger between science and religion in a number of ways too right born in terms from of the principles computer and embodies. economic science but generative of its own ultra zealous religion yeah yeah, yeah. And it's well, and arguably, um, like with the web, uh, once once adoption becomes high enough, it will no longer be seen as a religion. It will just be seen as the modus yes. operandi of like right. this is just this is just yes. normal, and and then it becomes uh, an implicit mythology. Yes, it becomes so. I wonder if that's the same process by which the Judeo Christian principles uphold property rights. Like it becomes so embedded. It's so so embedded. This is um. For Vakey, again, he talks about embedded uh, mm -hmm. cognition, right? That we're actually, yeah. conscious awareness is trying to take things in consciously and assemble them, but that you want to get them into a simple form so you can embed them into the unconscious and not have to think about mm -hmm. them. So it becomes a protocol. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if this follows a similar path that it just comes so embedded in human interaction that we don't even think about it at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And then just that, like, you don't think about buying a house today being like, Oh yeah, it's because we're Christian that I can buy this house and sign my name on the <laughs> deed. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I guess some people that maybe uh, pathologize their, their, their origin stories do actually kind of maybe identify unhealthily with their, their traits. Like, you know, you get some people that do self identifiers. I'm doing this because I'm a such and such demographic, yeah, yeah, yeah. but but you're, it's like Peterson says, you're right, like you're right in terms of 100%. Uh, Peterson says, you know, your intellectual leanings are, are growing out of, your, of this, the culture that you're in. Like, mm-hmm. you, you know, certain ideas only exist because of the culture you exist in. Like, you, know, mm-hmm. you can't separate the two. You can't just say, well, let's just dispense with yeah. our Judeo-Christian um, foundations because like, yeah. then you're not standing on anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, yeah, that's it's fascinating, and it's funny you just mentioned the idea of uh, embedded protocols, uh, which, in the context of our conversation about you are the let's say the 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 central planner of this kingdom that is your body. Um, when you develop healthy habits and rituals, um, what you're actually doing is is going into a, an exchange or a relationship with mm-hmm. your with your constituents listening to your body listening to your body but you're also asking your body to take responsibility for things automatically on your behalf right. Right. so the idea of building habits and rituals is actually you going into an exchange with the democratic parts of your system yes. and and building protocols yes. for the governance of of the the yes Organ the, the society that structural, is structural functional organization the the yeah. what do they call it the the bow plan or the gestalt i think gestalt yeah the gestalt yeah yeah the, gestalt, the, the yeah. holistic yeah the whole um so. i think about too this this you know when you're actually exercising physically training i think a new way i interpret this is you're actually channeling your willpower through your body in a way yeah and you're training your body across certain paths of motion. But again, this is like a conscious projection of willpower repetitive through the body to train it in a certain way. But then the purpose of it is ultimately so you don't have to think about it and you're walking with good posture, right? Your body's functioning well, you've got mobility. You, get, you develop this wisdom, you do develop a wisdom in your body and you feel this. That, if you've oh, ever man. encountered a predator or your you know, kid is almost fallen, like your body will act so fast in a way yeah. that your mind can't even catch up and, with and this was this was the 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 buffo experience for me was was there there is the the it was the realization of the various forms of wisdom mm-hmm. that the body mm-hmm. holds so mm-hmm. there's there's let's say the instinctive uh, reflexes which which you you could arguably using our simple western minds that that basically looks at the body as just being you know like dumb monkey right you could say well the reflexes are like the equivalent of a jock reacting on a football field but it's yeah. not that at all like the reflexes are a very advanced form of intelligence yes but it was it, it's wisdom it's it's reflexive wisdom but it's also when you exercise your brain works better you become That's more right. creative you Completely. become so you're channeling the wisdom of the body which is an extension of, of your brain yes. um and when i did the bufo that it was also the emotional wisdom yes that that I hadn't accessed that, right. that like an, like a deep existential wisdom, like a, a wisdom of something that would be incomprehensible, but something that continues to be incomprehensible for me to describe using language, of course, an awareness of, of deeper concepts that, that the only way you can describe them would, would make you sound like, you know, a hemp wearing, um, <laughs> well, but, but know, this like makes hippie. sense too, if you're looking at it through the lens of state and market, because the market is by definition, always more intelligent than the state, right? Yeah. It has the yeah. awareness of every conscious actor. It has the, their input and their consensus reaches a much more accurate conclusion than the centralized yeah. planning committee. Yeah, and the yeah, same yeah. is true if you, again, looking through the MOQ lens, if every cell is its own conscious actor, then the, the aggregate consensus of your cells is way smarter than anything you can contain here. Yeah. 
And if you're, and if, if from this level downwards, you're in deep repression, you yeah. are, ex, you are the embodiment of a communist state. Yes. Yes. You're, it, you're repressing then, the signals. And then that manifests itself as disease, right? People repress yeah. these energies or suppress this community and you, you'll pathologize yeah. basically. And, and what happens when, when the body is, 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 is treated, is neglected to an extreme degree by pathological re rejection, uh, um, repression, you get, you get ailments, um, like the, 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 the body goes on strike, yes. which is the cells don't want to participate anymore. The muscles right. don't want to participate. You get all these side effects. Same thing happens in a society when you neglect yes. its, its uh, infrastructure long enough. Like in France, in Australia right now, yep. the state is saying to every constituent cell in its organism, yes. stay at home or we arrest you. Don't leave your home. Violation of property. Trucker, violation of property. Yep. Violation of... of your body being your own property. Yes. And now the truckers are all clogging up the arteries of the country and saying, yeah. we're not going to deliver stuff, which is yeah. the exact same thing your body does when you've treated it badly on alcohol for too long. Yes. It just, it just goes into shutdown. Your so arteries clog this. up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fuck you. We're done. Like, yeah. Which is also, treat me well and, or fuck off. and it's an echo. Again, it comes out of property for me because when you violate those property, then those truckers technically are violating the property rights of whoever they're contracted to delivery for. Right. It's a violation of property to keep people in their home. It's a violation of property for truckers to do that. It's a violation of property to print money. We've covered that extensively. So when we blur these lines again, and you can just think of the line between private property and public property. Public property is an oxymoron. It does not exist. There's no actual public, right? It's whoever can get in control of the power of yeah. this public can then benefit themselves. It's a... Yeah. It's a attack surface for the parasite, frankly. Maybe I'll just read a couple of these excerpts about what I read last night, and we'll just see what it brings up. But I, this idea, I'm really trying to get my head around these layers, these static layers. He says they're discrete. So I'm thinking of a set of concentric spheres, right? Very much like the Russian dolls, where each layer is contained within um higher layers but and they have essentially no connection except the one small aperture which he and i'll read this piece that describes this he's talking about the base layer of uh mechanically creating a computer interfacing with a higher layer programming language so there's the flip-flops which are the physical uh, routing of voltages pretty much at the mechanical layer and how that translates into the symbolic layer of computer language. Flip-flop is a circuit that stores a one or a zero. If you don't know how flip -flop, a flip-flop works, what do you know about computers? The answer was that it isn't necessary for a programmer to learn circuit design. Neither is it necessary for a hardware technician to learn programming. The two sets of patterns are independent. Except for a memory map and a tiny isthmus of information called the machine language instruction repertoire, a list so small you could write it on a single page, the electronic circuits and the programs existing in the same computer at the same time have nothing whatsoever to do with each other. This is interesting to me. So we're talking about the combination of the memory map and this machine language instruction repertoire is the medium of exchange between layers, right? It's the only aperture through which they communicate. Money too has been described as a mechanism of memory. You could think about money as stored socioeconomic memory about whatever favors have been rendered to the market historically, right? Someone provided value to the market historically, they earned a profit they stored that profit in money. So that is the memory, right? The memory is like, hey, this guy added a lot of value. He can now go out into the market and redeem value from the market. Mm -hmm. So in many ways, you can think of money as memory. So that's interesting. There's a memory mapping function here. And then the machine language instruction re repertoire. I'm not as keen on what this means, but he's saying it's a very simple list. Sounds to me mm -hmm. like a protocol. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which a protocol is typically very straightforward. It's just, you know, connecting ends. It's like, here are the outputs from one layer. 
here are the inputs to the next layer and you're basically plugging them together. The protocol is the instructions of how those fit together. Hey everybody, as you've no doubt learned by watching this show, Bitcoin is the single most important asset you can own in the 21st century. And one of the most important companies in Bitcoin today is Nidig. Nidig's mission is to get Bitcoin into the hands of as many people as possible. One of the ways they are accomplishing this mission is by empowering banks and financial technology companies to offer their own Bitcoin products and services. As a true game changer in the industry, Nidig is safely unlocking the power of Bitcoin for forward-thinking individuals and institutions alike. Led by Robbie Gutman, Yen Zhao, and Ross Stevens, Nidig has absolutely exploded onto the Bitcoin scene recently and has quickly become a leader in this space. So whether you are a professional investor looking for asset management services or a company looking to white label your own Bitcoin product or service, consider Nidig your single source solution for everything Bitcoin. He talks about the idea of the flip-flops that, that then through the uh, machine learning instruction repertoire turns into the effectively the equivalent of BIOS, which in his day was like Fortran, which is like a yep. like Coke or COBOL. Um, and then on top of that, you then get programmers that, that use a different set of like languages. And then on top of that, you get what would be like something like an app, like a word processor. And then on top of that, you get somebody writing a, writing a yes. story. Yes. So, so at the top of all of that is the human experience of, of reading a word processed story, yes. but below it sits four discrete levels of, of operations that are all necessary for that complex um, writing process and communication process yes. to have taken place in the first place, which speaks to the same dynamic that's taking place in the, the, the human body, which yes. is that our human body sits on top of a foundation of inorganic forces. Um, and then our, our, our social understanding sits on top of that body because we need a human body in order to relate to other human bodies mm -hmm. in a, in a, let's say a, in another rep, in another instruction repertoire, which we, we called empathy. And then on top of that, the, the net result of the empathic biological units um, collaborating in unison creates yeah. the, the, the conditions for play and exploration, which allows us to develop the next tier up, which would be intellectual pursuits and ideals like freedom, for example. Yes. So in, in, in that parallel, um, the Declaration of Independence and the, the Constitution would be the equivalent of the, the, uh, the, the story that's written on the word processor of, of the American society. Yeah. And then below the American yeah. society is, is, this, is this network of... Um, Different nation, different national, uh, uh, different previous members of other nations collaborating in this in this grand experiment, and below that is the the operating system. You know, it's there are these parallels, and I think it's one of many analogies, but I think it's a good analogy. I think it's an excellent analogy, though, because we are increasingly, you know, before the digital age, we didn't have adequate language or analogy to describe human software and psychotechnology like these yeah. the idea of numeracy being a program or literacy being a program that we're sharing we didn't have that language really before computers so it's yeah. as if we've created a tool that's as closely representative to our own operating structure as has ever yeah. been right and that's what's yeah, so yeah, yeah. revolutionary and so a couple of things Ooh. i think Sorry, about God. this um i'm really interested here in the, the idea of emergent properties, right? So emergent yeah. properties, by definition, they are relational. This is one plus one yeah. equals three kind of thing. It's a, a quality that emerges from the interaction of two agents that's not identifiable in either agent, which to, mm -hmm. to your point and his point, it's like that novel that you're reading, you could scan with an oscilloscope, I think he says, the software forever, and you'd never find the novel. It doesn't exist. Yeah. The novel yeah, exists yeah. in it's an emergent property of the interactions between these layers. Yeah, because he says, if you were to look at the magnetic drive with an oscilloscope, yes. you would see the language of the drive, which would be binary, but you wouldn't have any comprehension of the um, programming language that 
sits within the fabric of that binary yes. uh, data. So all you would be looking at is using a visual spectrum to look at a magnetic spectrum that within right. it contains a, a software spectrum. Exactly. That contains within it uh, a flip you know, another spectrum. layer. Yeah. Flip flops back. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So um, and it it's interesting that you mentioned the software and hardware and um, it's interesting that that Pierce goes on to does when he explains the metaphysics of quality and, and he does make a point of saying it doesn't say that the subjects and objects don't exist in the way that we perceive them it just mm. simply states that they're not primary and that right. they come with certain baggage which is right. inappropriate one being that objects don't have any consciousness and subjects yes. don't have any objectivity right but he also goes on to say that when he when you look at the categories of inorganic force inorganic quality biological quality social quality intellectual quality mm -hmm. he says that social and intellectual is what we would understand as subjective mm -hmm. and biological and inorganic are objective which is yes. that from our perspective from our perspective looking, yes. looking down on them yeah. there's a causal objectivity to them because mm -hmm. there's the 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 illusion of causality right we're not down in we're not seeing the wood from the trees. We're not down right, at the right, ground right, level right, right. of what's happening within those yes. categories. Yes. So we assume that they're following laws, but actually they're complex. Um, they're complex communities of of, of conscious decision making yes. that manifest as stable to us. Right. Right. But that actually goes to map directly to the idea of hardware and software because the objects of biological and inorganic could be seen as the, um, from our perspective, the hardware that runs the software of That's social right. empathy and, and, right. and mental intellectualization. Yes. If you were to be a, a, a dumb robot and you were to find a human body that, that was in, inert, you would assume that nothing is actually happening within it because you wouldn't be able to see the software if you yes. were just observing. Right. Like, the, the dog analogy we talked about when a dog yes. is watching you reading a book yeah he just thinks you're staring dumbly at an object he doesn't yeah. recognize that you're passing complex data within yeah. the ruins of the book yes it can't it's the it would be the oscilloscope looking yeah at the, yeah, yeah exactly the magnetic it's, drive it's kind of like the frame problem right it's you you have a you your frame is too limited to perceive what's actually taking place in a way and and maybe, you know, the subject object metaphysics, that is, it's a symptom or a, a manifestation mistaking itself. Like it, like we under subject object metaphysics, we think subjects and objects are primary, but subjects and objects are actually derived from what is primary, which is relationship. Relationship yeah. is from what that is from which emergent properties emerge. Um, and all relationships are clearly premised on exchange, obviously. So the other thing I think about here is the, so the constraints that are integral to the static layers, you know, the flip-flop level has very specific physical constraints effectively. And then he makes this, I want to read this excerpt here. They, those constraints at one layer again serve the freedom of the higher layer but they also you know they protect against retrogression and so yeah. what he says he says this that i'll read a two-part excerpt these machine language instructions were the final achievement toward which all the circuits are aimed they were the end performance of a whole symphony of switching operations then when he got into programming he found that the symphony of electronic circuits was considered to be a mere single note in a whole other symphony that had no resemblance to the first one. The machine language instruction repertoire, which had been the entire design goal, was now the lowest element of the lowest level programming language. Most programmers never used these instructions directly or even knew what they meant. And so, here I'm reminded, it's just this, these embedded protocols, like they it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It means you've decomplexified it to the point of non-existence essentially. And then we're focused. Yeah. You're completely ignorant of them, but they are fundamental. Like you can't remove it. And again, I'm reminded here of like, Peterson talks about this all the time. You can't just take Christianity out of the world. It upholds private property rights, property rights uphold Western civilization. So it's like, we are this symphonic layering system as well. Not just the computer, but biology does this as well. We are that as yeah, well, yeah. like you're describing yourselves. It would, 
yeah merge and it's, into consciousness it's consciousness to, emerges here to to want to gut the culture and rip out the social culture would be equivalent to picking up your iPhone and saying, oh, I want to delete iOS, but I want to keep Google Maps. Exactly, right. So I take out well, the protocol layers. How are you going to run, you gonna run keep... Google Maps, you idiot? Right, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and again, technology is giving us the language to discuss this, right? You have the protocol layers, you have you know, the, the internet protocol suite. I think you have the data layer, the switching layer, the link layer, the application layer, something like that. They're probably out of order. But you can't yeah. remove a lower level, which, no. which again, it simultaneously constrains the the interactions within its layer. But it's also so it's so it's constraining. It's anti freedom, in a way, yeah. to the elements within it. But it's supporting the freedom of higher layers. Yeah, and it's all the speaking through this little aperture of exchange, and it's those media of exchange that actually generate the emergent properties that the collective brings like the novel at the top right you can't even yeah, look at yeah. the connection between two layers you can't look at the connection between the higher layer uh computing language and the second layer and get the no, novel no, no no you have to look at the whole yeah. thing and all their connections yeah. and then you still can't even understand how it emerges it's so complex yeah and i think that's like the the Buffo of Arius experience was was I guess to use if we're going to use this analogy, it was the equivalent of um, it was the equivalent I guess of going into like resetting the computer, mm -hmm. but then going into safe mode, mm -hmm. where it's like running in like the blue screen base mode. Yeah, and then while you're in that mode, being able to like run a defrag on the hard mm. drive, so you're, you're sort of like it's like okay, you've got this chuggy, um, virus infused operating system mm. from years of neglect, mm. and you need a firmware update, mm. but you know you you haven't been able to get into the you haven't been able to restart the computer to to put a firmware update in there to clean up you know right, all, right, this, right. all this mess, and uh, effectively these these drugs or these the plant medicines mm. they're the equivalent of running like a virus checker in mm. in bios mode wow. and you go back in and you go oh my oh man i haven't been down here for ages like <laughs> god these, this really needed to be cleaned up and yeah. i didn't even realize this existed but now right, i've got it right, running right. It, everything's like smoothing smoothing out so it is actually it is actually a really good analogy because it's those experiences are the equivalent of of becoming aware of a level of consciousness within you that is systemically important but you're ignorant of it of its function yeah and until you learn to to value and appreciate it you cannot respect it in your daily operations yeah um so but did you get um i'm curious about physiological benefit post bufo because i've heard a lot of people say you feel like you're dying essentially and then the next day you are feeling tremendous i've had so i've done i've done two sets of I've done the plant medicine. I've done ayahuasca six times yeah. and I've done Bufo three times and I haven't had, and I think this is probably a byproduct of my personality. Uh -huh. I would say that I still cling on to reality as hard as I can, even when uh -huh. I try to let go, uh -huh. um, which is, is a blessing and a curse because on, it's like Piercing talks about when he does peyote when he says he simultaneously feels an aspect of himself that he's never been aware of. Yeah. But at the same time, he weaves like these highly complex intellectual webs. Right. Right. In right, the experience. right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's kind of a byproduct of being sentient of what's happening. Yes. And the, 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 the cost of being sentient to what's happening is that you don't um, like go completely become absorbed yeah. by it. You're trying which, to record guess, it or document it or something. Maybe it, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and the act of doing that, both makes you a cartographer, but you're not mm -hmm. really the, the you're not really the adventurer because mm -hmm, you're you're mm -hmm, too busy mm -hmm. trying to complete a task instead mm -hmm. of enjoy the landscape. Right. Um, there are uh, when I did ayahuasca, there was physiological shifts because you you purge, you vomit. Mm -hmm. um, some people unfortunately shit themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but I've I've also heard through firsthand anecdotes and also through reading about it that people purge 
very specific things that uh, you wouldn't think were physiologically possible, but are. So one person, one guy that I um, uh, spoke to when I did it in Canada said that he, he had done an ayahuasca ceremony um, like years after he had been on cancer treatment. And, um, he, and he said that when he was taking like the cancer treatment, he was taking certain pills. And when he would vomit, there was a very specific um, let's say quality and taste to that vomit because it was infused with all these chemicals of, of the, right, God right, knows right. how many pills you take a day. Yeah. And, um, and he said that years after that, when he did ayahuasca, he, he purged and, and, and the nature of what he threw up was not purely the contents of the stomach. It was like, it was like the, the, the organs had like purged. Right. And, and um, it's wow. known that for example, the liver and the kidneys maintain that they hold on to certain things for a long time. Yes, yes. And 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 people describe that sometimes they vomit things which aren't recognizable as just yes. like the contents of their stomach because you you fast before yeah. the ceremony. Yeah. So you can't, it's not like you throw up spaghetti because you haven't yeah. eaten in like right, in a right, long right. time. So when contents come up, which arguably cannot come from your stomach, you know that your body is actually physiologically purging something from wow. other areas of itself yeah people talk about how they just they feel genuinely cleansed afterwards like they've gotten rid of chemicals or you know it's like when you fast and your body gets rid of certain proteins it burns yes. off fats that have been like maybe in like reserve for a right. long time and yeah. they become redundant but because you're always eating carbs your body never yes. burns through the excess yeah so i know for for, for sure that the, there are physiological benefits to doing the plant medicine i think it's less so with bufo okay um, because because ayahuasca is is a you ingest it it's a nine hour process it really runs through your whole body yeah you vomit you shit yourself uh it's the you, it, the best way that i can describe it in terms of the equivalency is that bufo would be like smoking a bong mm -hmm. um ayahuasca is like taking an edible Mm, gotcha. they're they're, yeah, yeah. they're the same they're the same compound you're, you're taking the same thing but you're yeah. you're handling it in a different way like an edible right. can last for hours and it can take a long time to kick in whereas a bong you take 10 seconds and then you you have a really high right right, right right and th th did you experience these detoxifying effects as well like did you have physiological change did you have any physiological ailments going into it that you were trying to clear or I don't know why I didn't have a physiological effect. Uh, I still think that my ayahuasca trips were, I never really felt safe or comfortable in the environment that I was doing it in. And that, mm. that plays a big part. Um, and it was a group session. I don't like, mm. I don't like groups. Mm. Uh, whereas the, the Bufo in Mexico was with one facilitator who I really liked and, mm. and felt safe with. And it was in the day as well. It's, it sounds weird, but ayahuasca you do it, you do through the night. Yeah. It's a, it's a very different experience. Um, ayahuasca is very unpleasant and that might be necessary for mm -hmm, the trip. Mm -hmm. Bufo was just, I'm never doing ayahuasca again. Um, Bufo was, was so much more potent, lucid, clean, um, emotional, resonant, because my main thing is if I ever do it, I want to do it in like the five star resort type setting. I don't want to mess with yeah, yeah, yeah. anything. Well, this, shifty. this place, no, no, this was not shifty. I, I'll send you a link to the, to the place you can check it out. It's, it was a beautiful location, um, really responsible. The, the person that runs it set up a whole sanctuary around it just because of his one experience. Yeah. And I would say that the sanctuary itself, which is in Tulum, because some some facilitators like you know you go out into the jungle for seven days and you know it's, it's very hardcore mm -hmm. and and i get that and I'm, I'm sure that there are immeasurable benefits to that yeah. but this guy's this guy's um th thesis or like approach to the to the sanctuary that he set up in tulum which is a which is a city well not a city mm -hmm. it's a town and it's a little kind of enclosure that's still in the middle of things you can still hear the yeah. noise of town outside so it's less in nature but his ethos is as many people as can experience this as possible. That's my goal, which is to make it accessible yeah. because it's, I don't, I just don't, it's like Mike Tyson talks about it a lot. Cause the, the Bufo Alvarius is, is the toad that he smoked and he, right. you know, it was a massive transformation in him and that's popularized a great deal. Um, once you do this, 
it's very difficult to see reality in in the same way mm-hmm. and to be I, i've lost there's a lot of stuff i didn't integrate so i need i, I would like to do it again at another time but yeah. what i did experience was like a deep sense of gratitude and an awareness mm-hmm. that there's just there's so much more than this and this is all relatively petty yeah like this 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 existence is, is yes, it's not yes, petty yes. It's, it's necessary but you you take you you get a deep deep understanding like you know with my mum having just passed i just i i grieved in a in a in a in a way that just made me have a deep sense of appreciation for everything mm-hmm. that made the loss a completely necessary it's the cost of creation mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you yeah. know and and um you you just have this 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 new paradigm through which to see things because you're bringing your entire body into the experience and it, right. and it has all this wisdom that you don't get in modern life because we're all staring at screens and getting drunk and yeah. on our iPhones we're all we're all cut off yeah so so I would recommend this Tulum place um, if you really want to go hardcore you can go and deep dive and go to a week into the jungle yeah um, but for no, me I don't I don't want to do that. <laughs> Uh, Dip, yeah. dipping my to- dipping my yes. toes into this this sanctuary was the perfect it was the perfect like starter course i'm just struck by we it feels like maybe we've touched on another important principle to revisit is this idea of the cost of creation mm. you know it's not free creation is not yeah. free and that is precisely what the central bank is violating by the way when you take the cost of monetary creation to zero and you're yeah. you're representing the case of the cost of creating this ultimate metaphor guidance system for humans which is money whatever you want to call mm-hmm. that and you take the cost of creation to zero you're lie like it's a lie right it's misrepresenting reality and it de- therefore destroys our um, ability to organize ourselves harmoniously within reality effectively we're lying to ourselves it, it, it's self-deception at scale by ignoring the cost of creation well ignoring the cost of creation could be rephrased to uh and i'm trying to i'm trying to center this around the cost of creation is sacrifice yes so when you when you when you as a central bank devalue or make the cost of of money nothing yeah. what you're actually doing is is disrespecting and um and destroying the sacrifice of of consciousness it's like people yes. have, have sacrificed you you are literally destroying their sacrifice by absorbing it you're absorbing life energy yes. which is quite literally the the metaphor they use in the satanic rituals is like yes life absorption killing life yes and it is literally and create creation is life so our acts of creation are our life itself so when yes. you steal that you're you're literally stealing life you're stealing breath yes and you said destroying information which is the central bank distorts prices destroying life inflation proceeds go to fund warfare clearly that's the most destructive force to life also destructive to the uh, creations of life, which is capital, right? All the things that all of our ancestors have spent so long figuring out how to coordinate to create, this undoes that, this preys on well, that. Oh, well, man, like arguably the purpose of life is creation. That's what yes. life does. It creates, whether you create a, a, a baby inside your womb or whether you create a, a platform that other people communicate on or you create a yeah. hospital or you create... That arguably creation is is this is what separates um, consciousness from non consciousness. Yes. So when someone uh, when when a force corrupts the the uh, medium through which you can acquire the the sacrifice the the creative sacrifices of consciousness, you're, it's it's basically a it's it's stealing life, it's stealing time, it's stealing. Um, uh work it's stealing everything it's stealing yeah. life itself money is 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 life <laughs> in some yeah. sense yeah. or it's because all of those sacrifices the, the proof of work mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. right that's 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 time. it that's that's the crux of it is the central bank is the proof of theft 
system built on top of gold's proof of work system. So, it, I mean, it's a direct manifestation of this parasitic relationship. And now I wonder, is it itself a uh, fractal reflection of this residual we have that we've been exploring earlier, where we have this, this weird, we as Westerners, post-enlightenment Westerners are severed from spirit, right? We're way too up here and not in here. And like, as you just experienced with Bufo, there's a lot more going on down here than we're even attuned to or even aware of. And so has that disconnect been manifest into the world as the central bank? That's what I'm wrestling with. Yeah. And okay, this is a weird thing to make an observation of, but um, in my second Bufo session, um, such a weird, uh, I had this like this deep sense of compassion, which argue, like, which I'll, I'll say right now, cause I don't want to sound like I'm virtue signaling here, which, which, mm -hmm. which was fleeting cause I don't feel it anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, but in my second session, I was, I was looking, I was being confronted with memories and thoughts and feelings about how each and every one of us is, a, is, is a sacrifice. We're being sacrificed in this realm. Of course. And, yeah. and, and, and suffering is, is the, is the experiential um, quality of being sacrificed by, by, in, by the infinite being yes. sacrificed here in this realm we're suffering yes. on behalf of the infinite yes and we're all effectively finding our way and we're lost and my my mind or my heart or whatever you want to call it in this experience went and, and sort of tested that hypothesis of compassion by like mm -hmm. first you know moving around my immediate circle like my family and like thinking about my mom and the sacrifice she made and thinking about experiences where i would previously have held her accountable for being guilty of something mm -hmm. and then seeing her actions as being the desperate attempt to navigate life in her own way sure. from the position of ignorance and like sure. just suddenly feeling compassion for her yes 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 and then my, my mind then gravitated towards the, the figures that represent the antithesis of who I would want to give compassion to. Mm -hmm. And I actually started thinking about Klaus Schwab, the World <laughs> Economic Forum. Yeah. And there's an image of him sat next to his wife mm -hmm. and they're in the front row of some, of some fucking World Economic Forum mm -hmm. circle jerk. And the front is all dark because there's something up on the screen and his, him and his wife are sat there looking up at the screen and, and he's looking up and he's got his little glasses on and you can see the reflection and he's almost like looking up at his, let's say his creation, which is this event. And before the booth, I looked at that photo. It's just like, this guy is an egomaniacal psychopath and he's, he's evil and I hate him. And then I looked at it, the photo and realized that, here is this fallible, sad, old man who is looking for purpose and meaning in his existence. And he, he was born into some fucked up family that had incestuous control of the, you know, the Swiss financial system. Mm -hmm. And here he is as a lost, nearly 80 year old man looking up at the screen after pursuing a life of what he thinks he's supposed to do mm -hmm. to, to be happy. Mm -hmm. And he and he's disconnected from the reality of his choices. And I just I just looked at him and I just thought, oh man, I feel sorry for you. Like yeah. you, you don't understand the suffering that you're causing. You're you're lost. You you're following protocols that you were given as a child. You're, right. you're following some family heritage. Like no one's giving yes. you guidance either. You're just as lost and hopeless as I am, and as some four year old is. And it's every, like there's just this element of like the leader of the God, lost, even the leader of the lost, you yeah. know, blind leading the blind. It's the blind yes. leading the blind. Yes. And yes. just, and just sort of sat there. And it goes back to that feeling of like, he's as like in the same way that I'm holding him accountable and responsible for the way that he's managing centrally planning and managing society with, with his, with his methods and strategies mm -hmm. with his buddies. I'm just as accountable. If, if there was some cell in my body doing a Bufo trip that was, had an individual perspective. It could be imagining me right now going, this guy's an absolute tyrant. He's neglecting yes. Never you know, our entire culture. Yeah. Never listens to me. <laughs> and he's oppressing me. And then it would go, oh yeah, but he's just an idiot. So, yeah. you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. And if he knew what he was doing, he would change course. So yes. that was the, 
that was a strange takeaway from the Bufo experience was looking at these World Economic Forum members like, and just knowing that they're all just these, these children that probably weren't loved enough, that don't understand the nature of spiritual connection, that they're, they're, just, as, they're just the victims of this residue of Western civilization as we are. Yes. It's just that they've got a slightly better position in the hot tub of Western civilization. It's like, right. it's like, yeah. Bill, it's like that <laughs> Bill Burr joke. It's like the Bill Burr joke when, um, when, you know, some, some, uh, when some like female goes, oh yeah, the, the patriarchy, you're the patriarchy. And it's like, and he says like, yeah, but you're white. So, you know, you're in the hot tub with me. <laughs> like, you, can't, you can't, you can't be sat there like throwing shit at me as being the white patriarch because yeah, by yeah. virtue of you being white, you're, you're enjoying the benefits too, you know, like. And it's just that thing of like, as soon as you start handing off responsibility, it's your fault. And then it just goes right. down the chain. It's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault. Yes, and it goes yes, up the chain yes, as well. Yes, yes, um, yes. That's why, yeah, that, in the history of humanity, blame has never solved anything, right? We No. Again, back no. to cleaning your room. It's like, it starts within, frankly. Like, yeah. we want to manifest different reality without. We really have to start with what is within. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and that's the that's the thing that, like I said, that, that, that feeling was fleeting. I remember it. I remember the, the nature of the memory of that feeling, but I can't necessarily recapture it just on a whim. Yes. Like it, it's, it's a fleeting thing. You have to integrate it in yes, your actions. Yes. And, I'm reminded and that's of, where the discipline comes in. I'm reminded of love thy enemy too. Love the enemy and all is fair in love and war. That was another yeah. thing that made more sense to me after Bufo was like yeah. love and war are, they're not, they're two sides of the same coin. Right. Um, you you can't you can't have life without suffering because then you wouldn't know what love is and you can't have love um without first you know you can't have you, you need the two things you need yes. the pain to understand the, the pleasure you need the, the love to understand the sadness you need the yes. joy to you know you need they're two they're they're the they're the spectrum and and the buffo makes you if joy and sadness are related to each other yes along the spectrum then buffo allows you to experience the spectrum and not the ends yes 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 this yes calls to mind it, it collapse it collapses the spectrum into a single thing which is the holy trinity which is like the it's if value it's like that thing of b values precondition a yes yes what makes a and b exist is the value yeah. between them well buffo makes you experience the value and know that b and a are related to each other they're not separate they're the same they just right exploded in our realm the the um circularity of the spectrum perhaps where these things it's not we think linear spectrum a b but it's reality it's a circle right so when you go to one extreme you've actually come back to its opposite and it, i think I, this, is, like this is this is in it's it's sensational reality by the way I, and i if you've ever put your hand in water that's so hot it feels cold or so cold yeah. it feels hot i think that's like a sensorial experience of this circularity yeah yeah that, that you go full circle and yeah. i think that 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 is there's many ways that i can use to describe it but the idea that everything makes sense in a closed system was the, mm -hmm. the takeaway from bufo which is that the outer limits and the inner limits they're all the same thing and yeah. it, it, it's your stat it's your standard like soundbite that you would hear um from any hippy dippy that's done done the bufo but it comes down to that thing that it, it's an experiential thing that you cannot you cannot pass yeah. it on it's like god it's like the you yeah. cannot visualize yeah, 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 yeah. god you have yeah. to experience it yes um and that's and and this you know graham hancock talks about this as well as certain others that i think graham hancock talks about it uh books and our religious um kind of writings mm -hmm. uh, emerged from cultures uh, that were conducting the psychedelic um, ceremonies. Yes, like they, right, right, they, right. they were they were trying to, you know, the, the burning bush, seeing God. Yeah. The burning bush is smoking herb, you know. Right. Um, and and these these cultures had access to their own versions. It's like Piercic talks about this, that the Native mm -hmm. Americans have peyote. Yeah. Um, some cultures use mushrooms, some cultures mm -hmm. use uh, the toad. Yeah. Um, and they all tap into, they, they might be different, uh, specifically different, but they're yeah. all tapping into the biological and inorganic quality patterns. Yes. That Piercic talks of. Yes. Yeah. And the, we all roads lead to Rome. Yeah. And, and it's, 
the psychedelics, but also the ecstatic dance, the chanting, the solitude, the fasting, all of these things are paths into that deeper experiential domain. Mm -hmm.